What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We are set for a huge week in the markets. We're getting really close to the end of 2021. We have a lot of stocks blasting to the upside, and we have some big news heading into this week. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you already know by now, but there were um, a good amount of flight cancellations over uh, the Christmas weekend, unfortunately. So we're definitely going to cover some of these airline stocks. And we also have some pretty big news out of China. So we are set for a big week. Make sure to watch to the end. We'll definitely cover a lot of great plays. If you're new, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. But Tom, let's get right into it. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing heading into this week, Mike, is honestly the Santa rally. You know, I know that there's lots of other news out there, but man, the market had a great week last week. We had three amazing days to the upside out of the SPY and the QQQ both. I just think that it was just an, an amazing week, Mike. We saw tons of stocks moving back to the upside, a lot out of the growth sector. Like we saw Corsair have some pretty good weeks. We saw the airlines do pretty well. Um, even Boeing had a great week. So we just saw a lot of stocks turn back around and I really hope it continues up. You know, it seemed like the spirits were high heading into Christmas this year. And I'll be honest, the market performed very well. It was uh, some of the best movement I've seen in a while actually. And I really hope that this movement can continue into this week. You know, the rally seemed to be coming so far, but I will say, you know, the SPY is sitting right around this resistance, right around 472.50. So it's going to be tough, I think, for this one to continue, especially with all the Omicron stuff. But man, I really think that there's that there is high hopes for it. And I really hope that the volume comes in this week. For sure. So for those of you who don't know what the technical definition of a Santa rally is, it is the last five trading days of the year and then the first two trading days of the following year. So even though the market blasted up last week, technically it's not a Santa rally, but either way, stocks are uh, really rising to the upside and that's awesome to see. Um, and, you know, we do have a lot of momentum heading into this week, like Tom said. So I'm, I'm curious, you know, if we're going to be able to, you know, break through this resistance on the S&P 500. But, Tom, like even like you mentioned, like some other stocks like Corsair and AI and even Chewy and Disney, like they were definitely popping up. And, you know, I feel like they can, uh, you know, I mean, they're in a good setup. And I just hope that these can continue so we can end the year strong. Yeah, definitely. And whenever we look at these stocks on like the one year daily charts, they're really close to those bottom supports still. And it seems like they almost have nowhere to go but up. And there's been a lot of volume actually coming into like AI here on the daily chart. If we look at this, Mike, look at these blue volume candles on the chart. There's actually more volume coming in now than is coming all year. So that's amazing to see with AI. I really hope that some of these stocks start to go back. Um, whenever I look at AI, Corsair, um, Disney even. I mean, they're all down here right around supports and it looks like they're popping up. Honestly, Disney's one of my favorites, Mike, and they're actually right on that like 154 resistance. If they can break that, it'll be for it'll make for an awesome week for Disney. There we go. So I know Disney was definitely hit with like, you know, the lockdown news a while ago and, you know, airlines and cruise lines and hotels all really struggled. And, you know, speaking of airlines, you know, I know that we had like, what was it, like 1,500 flight cancellations this weekend. Um, you know, I, I feel like airlines should definitely be on our radar for this week. Yeah, I think so too. Like you said, 1,500 flight cancellations came in out of different companies like United Airlines, Delta Airlines, American Airlines, and JetBlue Airways, according to CNBC. So that's amazing to hear. Um, you know, we might see a drop back down. You know, the airlines had a great week. I feel like they're right on resistance, especially like in Delta Airlines case. Like you can see they had a almost exact double top there, right? At like $39.90. Um, honestly, I think that we might end up going down, Mike. Like anytime we've seen these cancellations happen in the past, it has not been good news. I remember there were those uh, weather delays a while ago. If we, uh, if we remember that, um, I would definitely think that this might make the airlines fall as well. And, you know, they had such an explosive week last week that we might even look for just some consolidation anyways. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's really, really close to resistance. It's been blasting up volumes pretty decent with all of them. And, you know, like they're just kind of on like a short term uptrend and airlines are like, it's in one of those like group of stocks where like, It'll just go on like really, really powerful uptrends and downtrends for extended periods of time. So I'm really going to keep them on my watch list. And if we go back to like Delta for a second, like intraday, you mentioned a double top. Like if we break through that, you know, that could be that could be huge. 
Yeah, it really could. You know, there's that huge double top there, right? At like 39.90. I'm going to go to the 90 day five minute chart just so I can pull it up here. But yeah, 39.90 is definitely a huge level up there. If we're able to break out above that, it'll make for some pretty good trading, I think. And looking at Delta, you know, like I said, there's these cancellations coming in, Mike. So it's going to be tough to break above it. But like you said, lots of momentum and stuff. If we're able to break 40, I think it could have a huge move to the upside, possibly up towards that 42 resistance. I wouldn't put it past it, given how much it's been moving lately. There we go. So uh, another group of stocks that has been trending pretty well lately are the China stocks. And I know we have some pretty big news regard or related to them. So what's going on there? Yeah, Reuters actually reported this morning that the China Evergrande Group said on Sunday it had made initial progress in resuming construction work with its chairman vowing to deliver 39,000 units of properties in December compared to your fewer than 10,000 in each of the previous months. So that's good to hear that they're delivering more units. And Evergrande is the world's most indebted property developer with over $300 billion in liabilities on the table. So, you know, obviously they need to get this work going. It's awesome to see that they're delivering these units. And like you said, Baba had a decent week last week, um, especially on Tuesday. We had a huge move to the upside. It kind of went flat after that, but it looks like it's holding support very well there around 115. I feel like with this good China or with this good Evergrande news, this could definitely make the China stocks move. And, you know, the China stocks love to gap up on the charts. You know it. So good stuff there. Definitely keep them on your radar. And with that being said, let's get right into the into the momentum plays for tomorrow. And with the first one, we have Baidu to the upside. Yeah, and with Baidu, go ahead and make them break out above 145. That should make for a pretty good runner. All right, with the next one, we have Chewy also to the upside. Yeah, this one's been doing amazing, Mike. Make them break out above $60.11, and they are right on that huge resistance. Sounds great. And with the last one, we have Neo also to the upside. Yeah, go ahead and make Neo break out above $31 even. Sounds good. So we are watching these three stocks for potential day trades to the upside tomorrow only if they break above the levels Tom listed. And then before we get into the comments from the previous video, I wanna shout out our member of the day really quickly, and that is Christian in the Discord group. Huge, huge shout out Christian. Thanks so much for being a great member and always providing some great uh, input on things. So thank you so much Christian and huge shout out to you. And let's get right into these comments from the previous video. With the first comment, we have Isaac asking about Pfizer, so PFE. I know a lot of people have had their eyes on Pfizer uh, over the past couple months especially. They have just been exploding to the upside. And to me, it's just like one of those plays where, you know, Pfizer, it's a solid company. The stock price has been doing very, very well. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of the opportunity has already passed. And at the same time, I'm not going to short the stock or buy puts on it, given all of the very positive news that continues to come out about it. So like for me, it's like I already missed it to the upside and I'm definitely not going to bet against it with all the Omicron news we have coming out. So for me, there's just no play. Yeah, I thought it was a really good buy down here around like that 42 to 43 dollar support in the past. And I thought it was pretty good to pick up back then. But, you know, right now, like you said, it's just a little bit overextended. It can obviously continue up. And, you know, they came out with that new COVID pill and everything like that. But keep in mind, the price might already be priced in. There was lots of news about that pill as it was coming out. So just keep in mind, we might see a short term pullback. Usually after this stock goes on a big run, it pulls back kind of like what we saw um, in August and then September. You know, you can see it was on a huge uptrend and then kind of like what we're in now. It started consolidating and then just had a bit of a, a bit of a pullback. And I feel like that we might start going back into that phase again. All right. Uh, with the next comment, we have Shelly asking about XLNX. XLNX. So I don't really watch this stock too much, but it has been doing pretty well over like the past year, which is awesome. To me, it looks like it's in like a like a downtrend. I'm not like super bearish on it, but um, I am, uh, I guess you'd say like neutral to bearish and I can see it retesting right around like 195. Yeah, I could see that too. Somewhere maybe like 195, 200. There's definitely some big uh, support levels down there. And looking at it on the daily, you know, this one's another one. It's uh, It was on fire there for a while, but it definitely hit a big resistance. And, you know, I feel like it could definitely go a little bit lower in the shorter term. 
There we go. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you trade options, definitely check out the first link in the description and the comments down below. Our bot has been on fire. So we could see on Friday, the bot called out the Disney $152.50 strike, $52.50 call options uh, at $220 each. It ran all the way up to 283. That was like a 28.6% pop the bot has been on fire of course not every single play explodes up but disney popped for 28 percent palantir popped for 28 percent square popped for 175 percent that went from 345 all the way up to 950 and then the DraftKings one popped for like 10 and a half percent so definitely check it out you can cancel it anytime now's the time to try it out the market is definitely moving a lot right now and we have a coupon running to try it out it's going to be that first link in the description and the comments down below daily options swing trades day trades access to a ton of custom bots and a private community is all offered so definitely check it out but with that being said thank you guys so much for watching and if you have any questions let us know in the comments down below